interesting happenings this week with Dr. Dobson. Your thoughts? Yes, uh, at, yes. The, at the National Prayer, uh, rec- at the uh, National Day of Prayer, which of course was yesterday, mm-hmm. uh, thousands of events all over the country, people meeting in different locations, and one of those was in Washington, D.C. And uh, of course, Anne Graham Watts is the uh, chairwoman this year of the event. Several people spoke, one of them being, of course, our good friend James Dobson of Family Talk Radio, mm-hmm. founder of Focus on the Family Ministries, and of course, one of the most beloved figures in the United States. And he had the temerity to stand up and say that Barack Obama is, quote, the abortion president. And uh, during that exchange, he said that Obama has done everything he can to promote abortion. He very clearly has. He very clearly does. Uh, and uh, in the middle of that, he read a statement that he wrote about two years ago. Uh, when the HHS mandate was first handed out, it looked as though abortion itself was going to be covered. Uh, and he said, under no circumstances would I comply with this. He said, the Creator will not hold us guiltless if we comply with this. And he said, come and get me if you must, Mr. President. I will not bow to this wicked mandate. And, of course, he got a standing ovation. Uh, Thousands of people all over the country said, you speak for me. But one congresswoman walked out, Janice Hahn uh, of California, Democrat from California who represents southern Los Angeles, has a 100% mayoral pro-choice America voting record, 0% for national pro-life, so you know where she stands. She walked out, and that's what all the headlines have been about. But one woman who uh, did not uh, like what she said, what uh, Dobson said, in fact, she said that uh, she literally pointed the finger at him. She said, I pointed my finger at him and said, that's not appropriate, and I walked out. Uh, and that's what all of the headlines have been focusing on uh, ever since. But uh, I think the fact of the matter is, if you take a poll, the vast majority of Americans, first of all, don't want to pay for abortion under any circumstances, including abortions overseas, which was one of the first things Obama did when he became president, revoking Mexico City Mexico policy, City. which uh, Ronald Reagan put into place. It was revoked under Clinton, readministered under George W. Bush, and now revoked once again, sort of ping-ponging back and forth on our funding of abortion. But then also the HHS mandate, which, of course, mandates uh, coverage not only of sterilization and contraception, which Roman Catholics have an issue with, but... Uh, in fact, uh, some forms of quote-unquote contraception that could induce an abortion. Uh, and, of course, a lot of people have issues with that beyond just the Catholic Church. Tell me, Ben, is the media so consumed with the drama of a congresswoman pointing the finger at a family leader, or are they just not interested in the true persecution that takes place when it involves a religious organization or business that that has religious beliefs and, and conscience regarded in their their faith that they don't want to pay be forced to pay for something that we believe is the taking of life. I think ninety percent of the mainstream media is about misdirection uh, and spin. Uh, if you understand that and you know how the how the game works, and you've been inside the media, I've been inside the media, so we know the mindset of most of the people that, that we've worked with. Uh, you know, people in the media have a unilateral left-wing view, of, particularly of lifestyle issues, things like abortion and homosexuality and issues of that sort. Uh, and premarital sex, you can go all the way down the line. Uh, they're very secular and very, uh, we might say, part of a lifestyle left. And so whenever they get a chance to say, look at my shiny penny and distract from the main issue, and particularly if they can find some gambit that allows them to flip the issue around, they will do so. Uh, this was, you know, here's James Dobson, a beloved figure, giving a common-sense speech that relates to the facts of the issue, and uh, where he's cheered by people in thousands of locations across the country. One woman doesn't like it, and she becomes the national symbol uh, of the entire story. She becomes the story, not the fact that not only do you have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and millions of people who disapprove of this policy, uh, the vast majority, Obamacare itself has never had a majority of people who supported it, I think in any poll, but uh, now it is far below uh, majority status, and as is Barack Obama's poll numbers uh, themselves. But uh, uh, you know, here, here you have someone who is speaking to the majority of Americans, especially people of faith, saying we do not want to fund and we will not fund abortion-causing drugs in any way, shape, form, or fashion. That should be the story, the fact that this administration is persecuting and infringing on our religious rights. Ben, just speaking to the religious aspect of this, our, our churches and the views in society of being pro-life and pro-marriage, okay, I'll call it traditional marriage, like a peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, 
a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and I'll call it a traditional peanut butter and jelly sandwich because that's peanut butter and jelly. This, in this case, would be a man and a woman. I don't say that out of hate. I say that out of just common sense reality and the beautiful differences between genders. Tell me, are we going to a time where churches, I would think, would be front and center saying we are not on board with the marriage redefinition and we are not on board with the life the, the diminishing appreciation for life through the notion that you could call it choice. I, uh, if, and maybe I'm wrong on this, and so that, that, please help me out here. But I get the idea that when I think I should be hearing from the church the most, a united Christ, the body of Christ, I'm not. And it's in areas where they recognize life is a life is a life and marriage is between a man and a woman. Are, is the body of Christ in America compromising on those? I think that that's an outstanding question and an outstanding point. Uh, I, I wish that uh, I heard the same sort of unanimity and uh, unilateral response that you are hoping for. Uh, that is that there are certain issues that from the beginning of Christianity, I mean, if you're a historian, you can trace it all the way back to the very early days and the first writings of Christianity. Uh, that uh, certain behaviors have been condemned, for example, abortion, all the way back literally to the very foundations of Christianity, even before that in uh, the writings of the prophets, but uh, especially uh, in the early church. And in, when it comes to marriage, and for example, uh, not even marriage at all, but uh, any, any, kind of, any kind of sexual activity outside of Sorry, marriage, marriage has always yeah. been condemned. Everyone knows that, mm -hmm. uh, homosexual or heterosexual. Right. It has always been condemned. Uh, so this is something that everyone in the body of Christ should be able to speak about. But instead, what we see is a lot of, uh, particularly a lot of evangelical organizations, but uh, Catholics as well, that want to have a soft image and focus on some, something else, something sort of esoteric like environmentalism or uh, some, other, some other issue, consumerism, uh, things that may very well be uh, uh, issues we may want to be concerned about. In the issue of environmentalism, I think it's overblown, but... Uh, uh, these may be worth, worthwhile issues on their own, but they're not gospel issues. Life, mm -hmm. homosexuality, these are gospel issues, and we should be involved 110% on them. And, and for that matter, adultery and premarital yes. relations. That's the other thing. I, I, I'm, I, it's getting to the point now where I, I don't want to play the game that they're going to define the issue and the narrative on the issue. I mean, I, I obviously point out the fact that because you believe marriage is between a man and a woman and you speak up for it and defend it doesn't make you a member of the Westboro Baptist Church, those morons. It's, it's, but that's, that's the world we're in, and that's where I would like the church to come out and say, hey, hey, no, we, we're not going to... I remember watching an old episode of Scrubs, okay? I never watched it in its own incarnation, and I don't watch it anymore, quite frankly. The point is, I, are you familiar with the show Scrubs? The I, I don't yes. want no Scrubs. Okay, I'm so I, anyways, <laughs> okay, T. So Ben, the reason I bring this up is even uh, even Scrubs, okay, the show had a Christian on there and a Christian character, and she and there was an issue about abortion, and they had a characterization of Jesus, and they did it in the mainstream way and whatever it may be but it, jesus in essence kept saying no abortion no abortion they even maintained it you know and i was like wow thank you you know at least they're 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 defending and recognizing that one part and i don't see the churches doing that it seems i don't hear i should hear a bullhorn in the sense of people coming out and confronting the style legislation or otherwise funding organizations like Planned Parenthood and to me that tells me wow we must be really from the little I understand of the end times where the churches <laughs> become we're supposed to transform the world right Ben and not, not be person. transformed that's... by the world go ahead right um... Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, that's, that's the, uh, the real issue here, 
is that I think so many people just desperately want to be liked. And uh, they realize that the media has been uh, the media has been so negative toward the quote unquote religious right for our entire lifetime. Mm-hmm. And you and I aren't necessarily that young anymore. Right. But uh, you know, aware. our entire lifetime, the, the religious right has been demonized. Evangelicals, Christians of all stripes, people of faith generally, have been demonized by the media. And so people want to get away from that, and they say we're not like. And, and frankly, an entire generation has grown up with a stereotype. It doesn't exist in real life if you get to know these people, mm-hmm. as you did and I do. But, uh, in, but in the media, that's the only stereotype they have. So an entire generation has grown up with that idea, and they say, I'm not like that person. In fact, I, I don't even really focus on abortion or homosexuality much. I think about um, um, you know, Tibet or <laughs> whatever the or, or capitalism. Or capitalism. Or capitalism. I mean, yeah, the demonization of that and statism. Are you concerned about that, Ben? I know I'm, I'm waning on the topics. Mm-hmm. I'm going to post your articles, but i got to ask you about no, this fine. because y- your thoughts on uh, the comments about inequality, and I'm thinking to myself, what is going on? We're seeing statism and the church potentially advancing that. We do, uh, all over the place. And there's, there's, I understand the theological concern about this quote-unquote economic inequality. Uh, the issue for for Jesus wasn't so much uh, about uh, how we should all uh, acquire things, but how we should end up. Uh, the the gospel narrative has always been this: yes, if you have something uh, above and beyond what you need, you make all the money you uh, you have to in order to care for your needs, and then you provide everything above that for the needs of others. But you do that voluntarily. Uh, there was you know, the Apostle Paul and uh, the, the Apostle l- Peter in the Book yes. of Acts didn't didn't collectivize things and steal money from others or force the Roman Empire to do so. It was always voluntary. That is the key. Without volunteer, without a voluntary spirit, there is no virtue, uh, there is only coercion. And coercion is inimical to Christianity, both in terms of belief and in terms of action. And I, I can't put it anywhere else there. I think we should write down that quote from Ben Johnson, quite frankly, and I will re- reference it. So help me out there, Cedra. That was beautiful. Another point to that is the love of money, root of all evil, and understanding that we are in a time where the church can, and we, as the body of Christ, people are listening. And I guess that's what's so frustrating at times, Ben. We have this opportunity to go forth unified on these principles. Closing thoughts on what you say to fellow Christians who are looking to transform the world by being salt and light and speaking truth and love, but recognizing loving is not lying. Yes. Uh, I I would tell them, stay firm, uh, remember the gospel mandate uh, to go forth and baptize all nations and uh, and create disciples of all nations. And that means teaching the truths of Christianity, particularly on those issues of core uh, moral issues, such as abortion, homosexuality. When it comes to capitalism, Using free market principles has been the one great thing that has led to human flourishing and has allowed societies uh, to use their uh, their economic means for the help and support of others. That's why the United States is the most generous nation in the world, because it had the greatest free market system in the world. Uh, that's, that's one of the paths that we need to go forward. If you really want to help people, help them be creative and benefit from it. Uh, and you will, you will find ways that uh, tr- will transform society more so than any collectivist society. But stay true to the gospel and do not allow yourself to be bullied. And it is bullying. Don't allow yourself to be bullied by the mainstream media and uh, the cultural czars of the left. I love him like a brother. Ben Johnson, he is the guest host of Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth. He is also the U.S. Bureau Chief of LifeSite News. I scheduled a post that went up early so you can get there now and respond to our discussion as well as check out ben's latest work ben have a great weekend great to be with you my friend you as well my friend god bless god bless brain durham's nothing but true stay tuned for american family news chad groaning knocking it out of the park with some anchoring along with chris woodward reporting and then it's just between you and me the headline of the week your calls afr talk